Deep started when two skier buddies of mine uh, called up from Jackson Hole and they said, we want you to write a book about skiing and climate change. There clearly was a connection and they wanted to know more about it. And after they told me about it, I wanted to know more about it. What I saw almost immediately was not only were computer models saying that there's going to be a drastic reduction in the amount of snow around the world in the next 50 to 100 years, but already a tremendous amount of snow had already disappeared. Just the long-term trend is it's warming a lot and it's warming disproportionately. Uh, since 1940, the U.S. has lost a million square miles of winter snowpack. That's an area the size of Texas. Auden Chandler doesn't pull his punches when it comes to climate change and snow. He's a, a skier, he's vice president of sustainability at Aspen Skiing Company. Uh, he's a, a terrific, highly energetic guy who's been on the front lines of sustainable business for decades now. Look at what's happening in the ski industry this year. You have four years of drought in California. You know, that's not just that you can't ski, it's people's jobs in the hotel industry, in the restaurant industry, on the hill. You've got Mount Baker that normally gets 200 feet of snow closing down. So this is an economic issue and skiers should care because they love, they love this sport and they love the communities that are supported by the sport. And those are what are in danger. He's, he's a real icon uh, in this arena. One of the most incredible athletes in the world. And he started noticing in his travels that he was literally having to climb higher and higher to, to get to the snowpack. I'm an alpine climber, which means I climb in water. And I mostly like it frozen. That means it's ice climbing or it's snow climbing, stuff like that. And Oh, in the last 20 years, it's, things have really changed. I look at um, Trilatse as a peak in Nepal as an example that um, when we climbed it in 2005, the, the Fern line where the snow is was approximately a thousand meters higher than it was in 1987 when the peak was climbed for the first time. And it was an ice route at that point. And now it was uh, recently exposed um, granite there's kind of an indication that for a long time that piece of mountain had been under ice and now it's, uh, it's melted away. And there's um, many examples of this that we have as mountaineers from a um, sort of a historical perspective. We go back and we look at those same spots and we see that uh, glaciers are receding. I think we're gonna get there. The question is, is how hard is it going to be and how hard is the human population going to be hit in the transition that needs to happen. As a planet we have to transition off coal and off fossil fuels entirely by 2050. But what does that transition look like? It looks like massively ramping up wind and solar energy which is now coming in very competitively. It means phasing out all coal, uh, and that's actually starting to happen. In the U.S., it's on its way, and in China, they're slowing down radically. I mean, it's a real challenge because we have 7.2 billion people on this planet. Everyone wants a comfortable lifestyle, especially this type that we have in the United States, which is very energy-intensive. But will the planet be able to sustain that, and how long? So there's this... Um, next 200 years, we're at this, this really key point in the history of humans. We'll be able to figure out how to support our population on this planet without including ourselves. Everything we want as people can be had by solving climate change. The fixes clean the air, they clean the water, they provide jobs, they make, uh, make our lives more gratifying. Society has always responded to big changes that are required with something like a revolution. And the this, this snow sports industry, I think, can seed a revolution, but that's what we're gonna need. We've done major social changes on civil rights. 
on women's rights, on labor. We just did it on marriage equality, and we can make that kind of seismic change on climate, but we need to understand the problem and the urgency of the problem, and that's where I think the ski industry comes in.